Welcome. It is July 20th, 2014, The Daily Echo. Super Sunday. Thanks for tuning in. It's the weekend. We know it's the weekend because I'm pretty scruffy here. I don't get to shave much until uh, Sunday. i got to shave before church tomorrow. I'm going to move this discussion today into the medical field. I want to talk about a condition called rhabdomyolysis. And the reason I talk about this is I had a patient come in a week and a half ago who I hadn't seen in a few months. And he had been released from the hospital about a month ago. Been in there eight days because of rhabdomyolysis. He's a college kid who, um, not, a, not a real prominent athlete, but he played tennis occasionally. And on this one occasion, he went out and played in the morning here in Tucson, Arizona, hot, sunny day, and got in a challenging match with another guy. And they ended up playing for uh, an extra hour and a half longer than he used to, than he was used to, and started suffering um, some nausea, started suffering some muscle cramps, severe low back pain and um, was admitted to the hospital later that day and ended up being in there for a long time. So let's talk a little bit about what rhabdomyolysis is and let's talk about um, some of the statistics. 26,000 people a year are diagnosed with or we believe um, um, affected by rhabdo. The literature says that only two species have it, horses and humans. The literature also says that males are the only ones susceptible to it. But I've read a lot of papers from universities, from a lacrosse women's team, and other articles that, that have shown very similar symptoms um, with women as well. And I'm not really sure we can continue to say that women are not affected by this because I've read a lot of things that show the exact same symptoms based upon what they did. Um, why women wouldn't get it? The theory was muscle mass. Men have a lot more muscle mass. But there's some pretty big women now, a lot of uh, women in the CrossFit community, much bigger than some of the men. Um, so I don't know if that theory holds weight anymore. I think as women begin to exercise at the level of men the last 20 to 25 years, I do believe we're seeing it in them. Hormonally, maybe they are protected more, but some of the studies have shown some pretty conclusive evidence that women can get that as well. So let's talk a little bit about what happens with rhabdomyolysis. Your muscles have a membrane around them. Now understand there's three muscle groups we have in our system. We have skeletal muscle, we have smooth muscle, and we have heart muscle. Smooth muscle is our intestinal system. It's our stomach. Um, skeletal muscle is my bicep, my tricep, my quadricep, my abs, all of those. The third is heart muscle, so it only affects skeletal muscle. Your muscles have a membrane around them, um, almost like a Tootsie Roll wrapper, I guess, but it's contained. When we have muscle breakdown, this membrane um, surrounding wrapper gets broken down and fluid leaks out. The fluid that leaks out is potassium and a substance called myoglobin. Myoglobin is really responsible sort of for oxygen storage in the muscle itself. But also we have an infusion of calcium and some sodium into the muscle itself and we get a lot of swelling. This potassium in the bloodstream is not really good. The, the, the kidneys will do their best to try to filter it out. Unfortunately, the myoglobin that gets in the bloodstream goes down and it clogs the filters in the kidney. So that the kidney can't do its job. One of the risks is renal failure. So we've got to be very careful. One of the symptoms, if you have rhabdo, is very dark urine because myoglobin is a purplish color. When it actually gets filtered and gets put into, into the urine, what gets in there turns the, the, the urine almost like a Coca-Cola color. So potassium also can lead to heart problems, it'll lead to arrhythmias, can lead to cardiac arrest. So there's some real damaging effects that can occur with this and we want to be very careful. We also see it in crush injuries, like if you if something falls on somebody's arm and crushes it, it causes so much damage, these people will have massive swelling. They have to usually do surgery to open that area up because it, it, needs to, it actually needs to get oxygen to the tissues. That's called compartment syndrome. Let's talk about what creates it and what causes it and how you can prevent it. If you work out in hot um, climates, you're more susceptible, hot, humid especially, because dehydration is something that can lead to it very quickly. So those of us in the desert, I live here in Tucson, you want to make sure that you're drinking a lot of fluid, a lot of fluid. Make sure you're very well hydrated. Another thing is overtraining. We know that even a, a very highly tuned athlete can be susceptible to it. So you want to be very careful. You want to progress your workouts. If you're used to working out 30 to 40 minutes a day, don't suddenly work out an hour and a half and do um, a bunch of what we call eccentric exercises. Eccentric exercises tend to create more of a problem with this. An eccentric exercise is, is a resistant exercise. It's like walking down the stairs, walking down a canyon. 
Um, pull-ups and push-ups have a lot of eccentric parts of them as we lower ourselves and as we lower ourselves on a push-up. You want to be careful with those. If you haven't been doing them, these, these women with the uh, lacrosse, that's what had happened. They did a bunch of pull-ups and none of them had ever really done those. And it created this, this issue that, that uh, many of them are hospitalized. So you want to be careful with what you're doing. You want to progress forward. Make sure you're getting a lot of fluids. And look for the warning signs. We talked a little bit about some of the warning signs that, you, that you're going to have. You're going to have, uh, if you have it, you're going to have a lot of achiness, weakness. These, uh, a lot of people that have had it, they can't even lift their arms up sometimes hours later. Extreme cases, people have severe pain in the muscles affected. And so you want to just look out for the symptoms. Get to the hospital. They will do a blood test. Blood test will show an increase of creatine kinase in the bloodstream. This is what's leaked, you know, what shows up in the, in the system. So you want to be very careful. This is a very serious condition. We know 26,000 people a year, um, we believe, are diagnosed with it. Um, be careful in what you're doing. If you train athletes, really watch out for them. I think a lot of us have suffered from mild cases of rhabdo. Anytime your muscles sore, you've got a little bit of it. So we know that small amounts of rhabdo, interestingly enough, actually help the muscle. The muscle grows and does certain things. So it's one of those things that a little bit maybe doesn't hurt us, but too much of it can be deadly. It can be fatal. I hope this information helps you. I do think it's very important to understand this. Have a fabulous Super Sunday, we'll be coming back at you tomorrow on Magnificent Monday. As always, thanks for taking time to watch.